everybody, it's Brian with Retired at 40. Welcome back to the Live Life Simple Kitchen. Today we are revisiting an old favorite, freeze dried eggs. And I don't usually revisit a video unless I can either improve on the old video or uh, I have some new information. So today I actually have both, so stay tuned. Eggs are such a good thing to freeze dry because they're inexpensive. I think this whole thing cost me less than $16. They're easy to freeze dry, they reconstitute awesome. You can use them in a whole bunch of different ways, which we're gonna try several today. And I'm just dying to know how the tray dividers work with eggs because you're gonna do this the first time with me today. And I'm gonna get right into this. So today we're gonna do this a few different ways. I'm gonna do a whole raw egg. Uh, yolk and the white. I'm going to try and make one in each of these compartments in the tray dividers. I might actually uh, try it a couple different ways. I think I'm going to try it with the 40 individual and then I'm going to try try it also with the 20 individual. And then I'm going to do one whole tray with just scrambled eggs, uh, no dividers, because I can give you the recipe to make one whole egg uh, with the powder after we're all done with the freeze drying process. And then I'm going to do another tray with the tray divider of just scrambled eggs. I'm gonna do two eggs in each of these portions because I think that that would be great for uh, traveling, for backpacking, camping, any of that stuff where you just had just a cube that you could, uh, that you could take along with you. And then with our very last tray, I'm actually gonna, I really wanna redeem the hard boiled egg video. And I have a different way of doing it this time that I think will work because I would really like to have a freeze dried egg salad sandwich. Okay, so first up, I think what I really wanna try is to get one egg in each of those compartments, which was probably pushing the limits of the freeze dryer just a little bit, but hey, we'll never know if I don't do it. So today we're gonna do that. And you can see that the tray dividers, they're not gonna hold the whites together. Those will all just kind of even out after the whole tray is full, but it is gonna hold that yolk inside of each of those compartments. Okay, so I mentioned that we we're kind of pushing the limits of the freeze dryer here. And by that, I mean we're just about to the top of the tray. I've got two yolks left to put in. I actually took one of these and I pulled a little of the egg white out because I don't think we could even squeeze it in. Nice thing about these dividers is that it's actually evenly spacing. Oh, we just got a, a little overflow, but that's okay. Um, it's evenly spacing the egg whites. So I kind of suspected that that would happen with the, the overflow with the, uh, the 40 portions. So that's kind of why I wanted to do another tray with 20. That should give us uh, plenty of room for uh, stuff to move around. And that ended up being quite a bit better. So 20 eggs on this one. So for our scrambled egg trays, I'm gonna do one whole tray of just scrambled eggs, and then I actually changed the, the 20 dividers into 10 portions. I think I'm gonna try and do 30 eggs on here. That gives you three eggs per cube, and, and that'll make a nice size portion for an omelet. Uh, so I have, 30 eggs in here and we're doing large size freeze dryer today so you'll need to adjust accordingly if you have a different size but our 30 eggs uh, these are commercially store-bought eggs about seven cups of eggs that's really getting up there as far as uh, the limits of the tray uh, the most I usually like to put on is about eight cups this might change a little bit once we scramble them um, if you've ever tried to scramble that many eggs it's not always an easy task um, I have found that a blender works nice I use a Vitamix. Uh, you could also do a stand mixer or what I'm gonna use today, an immersion blender. I'll put a link for this one uh, down in the description, but the thing I like about the immersion blender is you can kind of, you can, uh, uh, you can put the immersion blender into whatever you're cracking eggs into and it kind of helps with the mess and just kind of the mobility of the whole thing. Okay, 30 perfectly whipped scrambled eggs now. And anytime you're doing liquids in the freeze dryer, whether you're putting 
putting it directly into the freeze dryer or your pre-freezing. Put your tray in the freeze dryer or in your deep freeze first and then pour your liquids into there. It's not always easy lugging a camera around back and forth so I'm not taking my own advice today. The 30 egg is really, really pushing it in here. Um, I, they, it almost seems like they got bigger after I scrambled them so I did take some more out, added them to my other egg whites. So I think what I'm gonna do on this one, I'm gonna do two eggs per section so we'll do 20 eggs scrambled in this one here. So as you can see I have quite a few other trays ready to be freeze dried. <laughs> so much to freeze dry and not enough freeze dryers. So our fifth and final tray for the eggs is going to be hard boiled eggs. I diced them up this time uh, as opposed to the last time I did it when I was just trying to rehydrate them as whole and freeze dry them whole. I think with the smaller pieces we, uh, we might be on the right track but I just really want that freeze dried egg salad sandwich but we're going to let these freeze overnight and then I'll meet you at the freeze dryer tomorrow morning. Okay everything's nice and frozen solid now but I want to get a quick weight on everything on all the trays just so we have a good baseline to go off of. Here are our, uh, our hard boiled eggs, 1473 grams. Here's our 10 divider trays of scrambled. Those are gonna be 2116. Here's just our straight up scrambled, 2262. Here are 20 individual eggs. 2166 and then our 40 individual eggs that's just beautiful looking 3058 go into the freeze dryer with these take a minute to subscribe if you haven't already and while you're there click the bell you can get notifications every time a new video comes out and if you do want to know about freeze drying make sure you join our Facebook group or our MeWe group there's tens of thousands of people on them uh, people that know just all kinds of freeze drying knowledge and on those groups we do a free giveaway every single week of freeze drying gear uh, some of the stuff that you've seen on this video we give away you can also go to our store freeze drying supplies.com and you can get any of that gear you see in this video uh, there as well and if you're in the market for a freeze dryer or you're just curious about some of the specs and information um, I will put our affiliate link down below if you can use that when purchasing it helps this channel out tremendously and it helps you out and it helps out the entire freeze drying community but we are up and running and I will see you when this is complete all right, it's been 37 hours, 30 minutes, and the harvest right says our eggs are done. But we're gonna put a moisture meter on them to just be 100% uh, sure that we have all of the water out of here. Now let's get a weight on all of our trays again. So there's our 40 eggs. They're now 1696. Our 20 eggs are now 1411. Our full scrambled eggs, 1343. That one's 1353. And then our hard boiled eggs are 1062. All right, so we're gonna take these upstairs. We're gonna see how all of them fared. We're gonna get a rock solid uh, formula for rehydrating these. So if you use them for cooking, if you wanna use them for camping or whatever, you wanna rehydrate one egg, we're gonna do that. And then I'm gonna try and make an egg salad sandwich. So the first thing I wanna do is run our scrambled eggs through a food processor. You could also use a blender. I wanna powder this down as fine as possible. And that's just really gonna help with the rehydration uh, the finer that powder is the better it's going to rehydrate the more you're going to get a, a consistent product that is just like it was before it was freeze-dried and then we're going to take this and we're going to go we're going to use our food funnel we're going to go right into a ball jar with it and all of those fit into one ball jar so that's pretty cool uh, if my calculations are correct two of powder plus two water should equal one egg and that should carry through with uh, this one as well uh, as well as this and we're gonna see if we can rehydrate these and uh, put that to the test the nice thing about knowing that is now I can label a bag like this I can take my portion I can put it into a bag with an oxygen absorber I can seal it up 
and now I have a two scrambled eggs portion for whatever I need it for. But here is the true test. I'm gonna do, I added two tablespoons of water to each of these. This is the cubed egg. This is the larger cubed egg. This is the scrambled eggs. And then the hard boiled as well because I still wanna make an egg salad sandwich. All right, we're gonna do our egg salad first, but I, I wanna remind everyone to be very mindful when doing raw eggs because it's really easy to forget that everything is raw and it's easy to contaminate all kinds of stuff. So make sure you're remembering that when you're working with eggs. There's our hard boiled eggs. They actually did really well. Um, if you've ever seen my hard boiled egg video, I did not have good success with it, but diced up, different story. All right, well, I'm just gonna wing this. Eggs in, pickle juice in, some mustard, and some mayo. And here it goes. We did it. It works. Any, anything that's thick, that's not powdered in an egg, give it some time to rehydrate and I think you'll be good. Next, let's try our scrambled eggs. So that's been sitting for about 10 minutes. I've noticed with the eggs, that you definitely want to let them sit because even in this fine powder form, you can still have some chunks in there. So the longer that sits, the better it's gonna smooth out. So let's try and get this scrambled egg going. So I thought it would be fun to actually make an omelet out of the scrambled egg. So I'm gonna add some mushrooms, some peppers, some jalapeno, and a little bit of uh, onion and rosemary. And the really cool thing about all this stuff is it's stuff that could be freeze dried as well. I'm gonna cook these just for a second and then I'm gonna add them back in with the eggs. The one good thing about the powdered eggs is it actually makes the eggs super smooth. And I just realized I forgot the cheese, but that's all right, this still looks really tasty. That's an awesome omelet with some, uh, some heat from those jalapenos. So the last thing I wanna do is actually poach one of these and then fry the other. But these have been sitting in the fridge for, I don't know, about half hour or so. And I'm just not totally excited about how that yolk looks. Uh, so I'm gonna give it some more time and see if we can get that to soften up a little bit uh, like it was before it was freeze dried. Well, it's been over 24 hours and we have minimal success here. Our yolks just still, they're still a little bit solid and the whites seem like they're fine. The yolks just, they won't take in that water. They're just not getting that right texture, but we're gonna give them a try anyway. And one way I think that we'll have possible success is to poach one of them. And then I'd also like to try and fry one. And you can see this yolk is just, it's just a real weird, it's like a tablet almost. It's just real, it's a real weird texture. The best explanation for it, the texture is a hard boiled egg. First glance, the fried egg looks really good and the whites did really well. Uh, they, they are just, they're totally normal. That yolk, it, it did soften up a little bit, surprisingly. And maybe at some point that yolk would actually take in enough water. It's really, it, it tastes the same. Obviously it doesn't have the same yolk texture, texture, but the taste is 100% the same. All gone. All right, well that doesn't appear to be working for me real well, so I think I'm just gonna go straight into the water with that egg. It probably would have had a better shot if I would have just put it straight into there. Um, I, I still don't think that it's gonna work. I am gonna leave this yolk in here for a while in boiling water because I wanna see if eventually it'll soften up. Well, surprisingly, after five minutes in just straight boiling water, it did soften it up a little bit. Still has a little bit of that hard boiled egg texture. The whites did pretty much what they do when you poach an egg. But if you're trying to get an egg like this, um, just in boiling water, like at a campsite, backpacking, something like that, it would totally work. The taste is still there. Just that yolk texture is not right on. All right, well, today we had pretty moderate success. Uh, found a couple new ways to cook eggs. Found pretty much what you can and can't do with eggs. And uh, as always, I always welcome comments on the video. If you have a successful way or you have another experience with eggs that we didn't try here, uh, please let us know in the comments. In the meantime, this is Retired at 40. Remember to live life simple. We'll catch you next week.